those that are feeling the same joy that I'm feeling tonight. But I also feel some excitement because I understand something about the God that we worship. That in the midst of all the troubles we have seen over this pandemic, God has been faithful to us. The fact that we are sitting here and we can move our limbs proves that we have a God that looks after us. And I would wish that everyone could be in this place with the same excitement. What does the church say? I don't know how I got to be picked to preach today. I am used to preaching short sermons when I encourage for stewardship. So if I preach longer today, I'll be making up for the times that I've always spoken for five to ten minutes. I want to greet those that are at home as well as we worship together tonight. I was a little bit disturbed in the afternoon because on our way here, we had a tire puncture. When we took our spare wheel, it also did not have enough pressure. But God was faithful because he allowed us to drive 80 kilometers until the next town. And we got help. Tonight, allow me to start by telling you a short story. There was an old man in my village who had lost his wife, has lost his children, and decided to dedicate his life to assisting young men in the village. So he took them, taught them how to play basketball, taught them how to play football. So this one day, he takes them to a field to play football. Now he had one thing that he kept with in his pocket. It was a photograph of himself when he was still young. He used to look at that photograph and say, I was once a handsome man. And that photograph would help him understand that throughout his life, God has kept him the same except that he now had gray hair. So after teaching the small boys how to play football, while they were playing, he takes that photograph, puts it in the pocket of a jacket of one of his players. Now when the game was done, filled with excitement that his team had won, he forgot about his photograph. So he remained behind while the young man took his jacket and went away with the photograph that was in the side pocket. The old man remaining and beginning to remember that his photograph had left with a young man began to run after the young man at night. Running after the young man at night, not because he wanted the young man, but because he was interested in the picture that was in the pocket of the young man. For tonight, our pericope is found in Genesis 1, verse 26. It reads, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. Shall we pray? Dear God, as we read your word, your word is you. Fill our minds with yourself. Transform us so that at the end of this message, in these times, when we are reading all the signs and seeing that they are pointing home, we can be drawn closer to your feet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. 
I am a student to lecturers at school, but I also have a lecturer that teaches me every day during our prayer session in the office. <laughs> and he has taught me to follow up certain things. And today, one of the themes that I want to follow is the theme of God in man. God creates everything from nothing, proving that God is greater than everything that is there. When scholars talk about God, they say God is a transcendent God, a God who is up in heaven, as who, who looks as though she is detached from his creation because he's up there. One could look at him and think that this is a God who is not interested in what is way down. And yet this God who is so powerful, this God who creates from nothing, this God who creates by speaking, chooses to come down to the creation that he has created. And theologians call that an act of being an eminent God. Being a great God, but choosing to come to the level of man. And when men sing, they say he came down to our level. We serve a powerful God, who in his greatness is still mindful of man, that he comes down. It is this same God whom we find in chapter 1 of Genesis, verse 26, who then says, let us make man in our own image in our own likeness. I want for tonight, just for us to concentrate on that portion, the first portion of that text. As you follow with me, I will define certain things the way they are defined in Hebrew. The word used for letters in Hebrew is kabat. The word kabat means that when God created man, when he has breathed his breath into man. He then found a place in man where he was going to dwell. And he took residence, not external, but internal. We serve a God who takes residence in our hearts. We serve a God who does not stand outside of us and watch us and leave us to be helpless. But we serve a God who comes within us so that when he has come within us, he then expresses himself while within us. And that expression causes us as human beings to then exude the Godhood of God. In other words, what makes a believer who believes in God to do what God wants him to do or wants her to do is because God is resident within. What makes you have a heart when you have done something that is bad or evil, you have a heart that beats, it's because you have a God that is resident within. So God chose to be resident in a man, internally. However, there is something that is disturbing about man. When God is present in man, men then chose in Adam to walk away from God. Adam and Eve chose to walk away from God. And they chose to invite someone else in their hearts. And God cannot cohabit. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I talk to those that live with spouses? that are not their wives. God does not cohabit with evil. God only habits where he is supposed to habit alone. God does not share. This is why in Exodus he says, I am a jealous God. I don't know why you cohabit, but God does not cohabit. When the devil takes stage, God gets out. Here is what I want you to know in these times when we need to understand what is happening. Mm. We serve a God who has created us and given us a power of choice. 
when we choose, God is the respecter of the choices of men. So whatever you choose, God chooses to respect. So when you choose to allow something internally that is not meant to be where it is, that seeks to take the place of God, God allows that person to sit in. And so when Adam and Eve chose to allow the devil to influence them, God went off the stage. Then man began to be troubled. When man was troubled, God, while outside of man, watching man, he saw his image. I have two daughters, and I love my daughters. And I am told that the young one looks like me. But when I look at the older one who they claim looks like the mother, I also see myself in my daughter. When my daughter has messed up, when any of them has messed up, when I go to them and I want to discipline them, when I look at them, I see myself. When I have seen myself, the anger in me begins to vanish. So that when I begin to discipline them, I begin to discipline them with love. And in my heart there is pain that I have to instill the discipline. So the measure of discipline I give them is good enough to correct them but not to harm them. Yeah. Jesus felt the same when Adam and Eve took him off his place. God felt the same when he was taken off. He stood and washed humanity and saw himself saw men looking like him and he said this is me and then he devised a plan of salvation mm -hmm. I'm excited when the psalmist begins to ask who is man mm -hmm. that you are mindful of him mm -hmm. man is the image of God you are the image of God. I am the image of God. We are the resident of God. God resides in us. And because he resides in us, we must not allow ourselves to can then do things that are ungodly. Then the text brings another word. The first one was what? Us, which, me, which was kapat. But then the text says, then God made us in his image. Hmm. Now the word used for image is a term that means something that looks like. Now it does not only look like but it is like a brick that comes from a brick maker or a brick molder that produces a brick that is similar to the one that was used to make the brick molder. Mm -hmm. So that that term used there says when God made us, he took himself placed himself in a molder. When he had placed himself in a molder, when he was molding us, he was looking at the molder. And as he was looking at the molder and shaping us, he was shaping us to his likeness. He was shaping us to his image. So that when we walk, anyone who looks at us needs to see a God who made himself in us. In other words, I am saying, when you walk around, walk around with pride. Mm. There are Christians who are so sorrowful. Mm. You would wonder where they come from. I come from the hand of God. I come from the image of God. And because I come from the image of God, I walk proudly. Mm. I want to say to you, do not allow the devil to play around with you. You come from a powerful image. Mm. You come from a powerful hand. You are not called into space like other things. But God took time. He made this thing 
that he then took you and he laid you down and began to fashion you in his fashion. If there's somebody tonight who's being abused by someone, tell them I'm fashioned in the image of God. I'm fashioned in the image of God. If there's somebody who's troubling someone, I need you to know tonight, stop messing up with the image of God. That's the image of God. There's no room for abuse. You can't abuse the image of God. Then the next term that is used there is likeness. Now the term likeness in Hebrew is demuth. Demuth. The term demuth comes from the term, the noun, Adama. Now when you look at that, when I was growing up, there are people who used to say to me, I walk like my father. I look like my father and I walk like my father. Now that term then talks to the way of doing things. Are you with me? It talks to the way of doing things. In other words, when God made us, he did not only want us to look like him. He wanted us to behave like him. He wanted us to walk like him. He wanted us to think like him. He wanted us to love like him. He wanted us to care like him. He wanted us to have this glory like him. I want to remind you that when Moses came down from the mountain, when he was carrying the tablet of stone, they that saw Moses said Moses was glorious. You know why Moses was glorious? The term glory there means that Moses was in one accord with God. Before God gave him the commandments, Moses went through the, the commandments. He agreed with God on the commandments. He accepted the commandments first and they transformed him. When he came down, he came down a transformed man. When he went up, he went up an untransformed man. When you are in one accord with God, you glow. I want to talk to ladies that will understand this better than us. Men. Ladies love looking beautiful. They love glowing. They even buy expensive stuff. I'm not looking at my wife. They buy expensive stuff. When they have bought expensive stuff, they then begin to work on their faces and on their arms. When they are done working on their faces and their arms, and they walk out, you really can attest this was worth it. Yeah. I have come to tell you there is something that will make us glow. It is keeping the commandments of God. In these times that we live in, in times when the theme is commanding us to understand the times, we need to keep the commandments of God. When you keep the commandments of God, God becomes excited. He takes his position in your heart and he does not move. He is unswayed. He stays there. When he is there, then you will have the strength that even when the devil comes with temptation and tries to dissuade you to do otherwise, God will give you the energy to remain standing and again when the devil comes and he hits you and you fall God is going to be the power that is going to raise you from falling then John comes in first John I am now talking to a fallen Adam Adam has fallen Christ has gone out. Adam begins now to die. Because you can't die when Christ is in you. You can only die when he's out. He begins to die. When he begins to face problems, he now has to work harder than before to tilt the land 
and eat from his sweat. And the God of heaven watches him. And then John comes up and he says, even in generations to come, by the way, when Adam has fallen, it does not stop with him. It goes down to generations until it lands on Noah, whom the book says, Noah was found to be a righteous man. And when, when you read that text that says Noah was found to be a righteous man, man, the text has a connotation of a man who does not clothe himself with righteousness, but a man who is given righteousness. God imparts righteousness. When he has imparted righteousness, when he has imparted that righteousness through his grace, no one gets excited when he receives the grace of God. That excitement then makes Noah walk with God. It then makes Noah do what God wants him to do. Am I talking to Christians tonight? When you have met he that has given us grace, that even after we have sinned, when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. You cannot remain the same, but you need to walk with God. You need to sing with God. You need to change the way you do things. Noah was propelled by the grace that was given him. In fact, that text says Noah found favor. We find favor because when God looks at us, even in our sinful nature, he still sees himself. Then Noah takes the word of God, he makes the ark. If I were doing stewardship, I would say to you, there is a lesson to learn from Noah. God does not begin to train Noah how to make an ark. He simply says, make an ark. And Noah uses his skill to make an ark for the fulfillment of the purposes and mission of God. In other words, the lesson we pick from there, Stuart, is this here. That if you have a skill, find room to use your skill to make an ark for God so that his mission is fulfilled. But a writer says, as Noah was busy making the ark in the specifications given by God, he began to see this thing that he was molding. When he saw this thing that he was molding, and it was marvelous, Noah began to worship within himself and say, God, you are a great God. And when he began to worship God, he became even more closer to God. And he became even more righteous. Listen to what I am saying. I am saying, when we go to our workplaces with God in mind, even as we work, we will begin to realize that what we do is actually amazing because God is in this thing that we are doing. And when we do that, we will get to appreciate God more. And as we do that, when God looks us form something, God begins to realize that his skill he used when he was forming us has been imparted onto us. Hallelujah. But I'm not there. Then Noah makes the, the, the ark and after that he and his family are saved and Noah becomes the seed that is kept before the flood and the seed that then produces mankind after the flood because Noah was faithful and obedient to God. I am saying, what will keep us in the hollow of the hand of the Lord is being obedient to God. Yes. When we are there, we will glow. Then chapter 8 verse 1 says, Then God remembered Noah. When you read that chapter, it creates a problem. It portrays a God who forgets. It says to you, we have a God who at times forgets. A God 
maybe who, when we are in trouble and we are in pain, we are in that pain because he has forgotten. It creates that problem. But I want you to relax and take it from the original language. The word remember there means acknowledge. So when God had looked at what Noah had done, God then came to Noah with acknowledgement. The pictorial message given from that Hebrew word is one who, after you have done something, comes like a commander of the soldier with epaulets to come and pin them on your shoulder to show that you have done well. So when that verse says, and God remembered Noah, it means God brought epaulets to come and pin them to Noah for the good life he had lived, for the life that portrayed the God that had created him. Listen, I said to you at the beginning, when God allowed himself in us, he wanted us to exude his character. He wanted us to exude activities that are godly. He wanted us to exude a speech that is godly. Some of us speak words that you, you will even ask, is this one a child of God? And they speak them like it doesn't, they don't care. In fact, they promise you, they say you keep quiet before I speak. Otherwise, you will curse the day you were born. Listen, when God is resident in your heart, you cannot speak anyhow. When God speaks, things become. When you speak, don't destroy. Make that which was meant to be destroyed to come back to life. And so God comes, pins the appearance. But I want to quickly fast forward and come to us. I want to go to John. Then John says, it is not yet known what we shall be. Yeah. But when he shall come, we shall be like him. Yes. I get excited when I get to this one. Because I visualize myself with a face that has scars. That smooth face, that glowing face that God gave me. When Satan came and, allowed, and I allowed Satan in my life, I developed scars. I lost the glow that God had given me. But when I lost that glow, I began myself to curse myself. And I lost hope. And after losing hope, I began to lose even the stamina to stand. And when John comes and reminds me, it is not yet known what we shall be, but when he shall come, we shall be like him. And then Paul begins to agree with him. Then he says in a twinkling of an eye, I don't know what a twinkling of an eye is. I don't know what it is. But I am told that light travels fast. It takes eight seconds to cover a distance of more than a billion kilometers. Which means, when I wink, God has done a lot. Because if light that is created by God can run that much in that space of time, then this God who will come in a twinkling of an eye will do marvelous things. I don't know whether you shall touch my limbs. I don't know whether you shall touch my face. But what I know is that in a twinkling of a moment, we shall all be changed. Yeah. And we need to be changed. Because as sinner says, we cannot face God now and live. But when he changes us, he will allow us then to sing number three. And say face to face with Christ my Savior. What will it be when I face you? When I look at him face to face, when I begin to talk to him and exchange, I want to take you back to the book of Genesis when Moses asked if he could see God. God said, no, you cannot see my face and live. And God chose to show Moses just a little bit of his back 
when Moses looked, my Bible says he only saw glory and he said it is enough. But I am happy that God shall change us in the thinking of a moment so that we'll be able to look at him. When a writer writes, he says, when you look at God face to face, you are looking at the law of God. And you can't look at the law of God and live. But that time, God will allow us to look at him face to face. He will allow us to see him for who he is. And when we shall see him, we will see that we are like him. Because we will be changed. Until that time, I have come to tell you, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He who, is, who has promised is coming. But here is what I love about my Bible. God makes an invitation. And when he makes an invitation, his invitation to the Israelites was to take them to a better land. His invitation to us is to take us to a better country. When I read the book of Revelation, John looking for symbols that he could use that we could understand. He says we are going to a city four square. Yeah. When he's done with four square and he sees that four square is not explaining enough, he says we are going to a city of glass. It is the city of glass that I love because it is the city after a thousand years that is going to come down. When that city comes down, I see myself in the city, but I see others outside the city. Who then the writer of Revelation says, they will then feel jealousy and want to attack those who are within the city. And then God will destroy those that are without and destroy sin forever. When he does that, because we'll be in a city of glass, we will be witnesses. We will be watching from inside, standing with the Lamb of God. The Lamb that will have died for us. The Lamb that will have saved us can't wait for that day. Mm. Can't wait for that day. That will be a powerful day. But I need to remind you that that day is only going to be realized by those who now will walk with Christ and maintain a relationship with him. Yeah. Remember I said when you walk with him You will exude his glory As you exude his glory They that look at you Will ask who but is this yeah. And when they come closer to you They will also find the lamb And they will walk with the lamb yeah. This is what we are created for We are created to showcase God among men when men look at believers, they must see God, they must not doubt God. And so I am saying as you walk now, in these our last days, understand that you are the image of God. The world must continue to see that image so that that image may usher them as well into the kingdom of God. When you speak, speak the words of God so that they that hear you speak will ask, where does this man come from? We went evangelizing, and we found people fighting. It was a Sabbath afternoon. Then we held the two people that were fighting. When everyone else was cheering, we became the voice of reason. We went to the two people, and we spoke to them. We said, but you are brothers. You need to love each other. And one man, was looking at us when we were talking. And I saw him move towards Elder Temple and he said, where do you come from? And Elder Temple told him, we come from the church in the corner in Lambila and at Alene Street. And he said, I thought so. It is only children of God who can come in a commotion like this and change the commotion into joy. The two men who were fighting walked away hand in glove because just one man had walked to them and proven to them that they are brothers 
all made in the image of God. I am saying your work and my work before God comes is to exude the habits of God, the love of God, the character of God to the world. To bring God back into our hearts so that we glow with his glory. Soon and very soon, he who is coming will come. If there is somebody tonight who says, as you are speaking, Pastor Kuman, I've been looking at my life. There are times when I miss fire. There are times when my vehicle smokes. There are times when my tar just doesn't speak well. Uh, there are times when in my doing, my character is totally different from what God expects. But as I look at the times, I want to stand tonight and say, let bygones be bygones. I want to come to God. I want to grow in the character of God. I want to begin to keep his commandments. I want to begin to obey him. And I want to make that decision tonight to shun all the other activities I've been doing to stop misfiring. If you are there and you want to pray with me as we close, kindly stand. Kindly stand. I will invite Pastor Scooper to come and pray for us. This is a special prayer. By the way, when I make an appeal, I don't make long appeals. I just make it short and to the point. He who is convicted, she who is convicted, just get up. Pastor Swoop, here is the church, sir. Lead the church to the feet of Jesus. Ere bitsa mbohelo jo ngwaga re ne re ntse re tshela mo ngwageng e go tloga go simologong ke le Jesu are hitisa mo go gopueng mo metseng a seretse e bo di mare tse re heta ga re ga seretse se ra re re heta le wena hitile Jesu mo di thabeng mo se kgweng se se le he he ga re ga ngwaga e re ngwaga Jesu a itla go go bohelong re khona gore re re ke modimo e leng a re hitlisa mo shaba ko morago a re ipone ha e bona gore nka be re khonne jeso go heta mo le hihing mo seretseng mo dithabeng mo segweng di o bitse pore itumela go nne re na le wena me gape re itumela re itse gore wena o ka mo gare ga rona wena wa tshela mo botengeng jwa rona are ndira sa go dumelela re ka bere le kae re tshela ka gore wena re go dumeletse maloba lobeng ha o no kokota pelo tsa rona ore re go bulele me modimo re dumela gore re kgone go bua rere ga go sa tshela rona me go tshela Jesu ka mogare ga rona le puwe re bua ke puwe hetogileng motsama o ro tsama ya ke motsama o hetogileng Jesu ra go lopa gore re tle re tshware pace ye re se ka rala tle ga go nne batho ba bantsi ba re shebile gore ba Kriste ba a mathata ba tlhagetse ba lela jang thata ba a tlile ba hutsa hala jang le mo di mo re thuse re tle re eme re tie mo tumelong ye ke rona ba re eme mo di mo go nnela ba tla go inela le sha mo go wena e re ke mo ya rona go mpione eske a nna le hela la mahela me nne gore nnete khato e re tsaya right about 10 e re tsaya eh eh go hetu ga ga rona gore go tsaya go mpione e nne ga nnete go go heletse ngwana ga go buile tseso a a bula sabata sabata sa kemiti sabata sa le tsatsi la bohelo me modimo wa re thusa mo gore ba botseleng go re ska ra go lebala re tle re nne ga o fi ga o filwela bo se go mbo toro tsa rona go rentse re bi tshepotse a enne di toro gore Jesu a nne mo pele ga ka ka gore ke le sebopi a sa gagwe ne re ntse re bi tshepra le bogara kopa amen amen